What is going on, Gumfighting Tribe? I thought I'd give you guys a special treat this week and put out some extra content. Now this is going to be a rebroadcast of some of my favorite 9mm loadings. And the reason I put this out is because I did one earlier this week in the middle of a bug out. If you don't know, a massive wildfire in northern Arizona caused us to have to evacuate bug out again. But still, by God's grace, the podcasts have gotten out this week. This is not in lieu of, but in addition to the other podcasts that normally come out. And I did one earlier this week on nerding out on the 9mm and getting really nitty gritty into it. But I thought today while I was driving that this would make a good pairing to that. If you like that episode, you would like this one and vice versa. These are some of my go-to personal favorite 9mm loads for defense. Again, the unique thing about this podcast, I think, from a lot of other ones, which are there's a lot of other good gun podcasts out there, but this one is from real-world first-hand experience. And we all have our favorites and our biases, but these are rooted in my own experience that I've been blessed to have. And blessed to live through and see and survive. With that, I'm going to edit the older episode. I'm going to cut out a bunch of the stuff and just try and get into the meat and potatoes of the episode. Make sure you're subscribed to the podcast. And please consider going to goodshepherdtraining.com. Again, goodshepherdtraining.com. And supporting on Patreon. If you think you get as much out of this podcast to make you a better gunfighter as you would out of a single box of ammo. Please consider contributing a portion of what a box of ammo costs nowadays to help support this podcast and the other ones that we do. With that, let's get into some of my favorite 9mm loads. Blessed be the Lord my rock who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. Psalm 144. As always, I'm your host, Michael Molito. First and foremost, I'm a Christian. I don't apologize for that. God is number one in my life, and I hope to recognize that in everything, and this podcast is no different. You know, from Grace World to Prairie Dog, I don't apologize for that either. I've been blessed to hunt all over this beautiful country. Started competition shooting even before joining the Marine Corps at 17. I've been blessed to win more shooting competitions than I can honestly remember. Uh, very blessed with those talents. A state rifle and pistol champion a few times over. Again, blessed be the Lord my rock who trains my hands for war and fingers for battle. Every talent that I have is a gift that's been given to me and I hope to use it. In the parable of the talents, Jesus says to he who has more shall be given and he will have an abundance. But he who does not have even what he has will be taken away. We have gone over several better know cartridges, and this one, really, I could probably do an entire separate podcast on just 9mm and 9mm handgun and 9mm loads. This is not all-inclusive, and uh, I should start by saying that I started competition shooting, cutting my teeth in precision rifle, not the precision rifle that's popular today, but the more old school, you know, three position Olympic style NRA style. But I was a police officer when I got back into competition shooting after the Marine Corps. And I thought, you know, if I'm going to get into a gunfight, the most likely thing I'm going to use is my handgun because that's what I have with me all the time. And that's been the case for pretty much my adult life since then. Sometimes I have a rifle with me day to day, but most of the time I don't. And so I started competition shooting. And when I went to LAPD, that was back when 40 was still the hot thing. Like all the law enforcement, I shouldn't say all, but the vast majority of law enforcement, police, even civilians thought 40 was the, the hot thing to have. It was the best defensive cartridge. And I was issued the Glock 40, or the 40 caliber Glock, the Glock 22. Uh, in my opinion, a horrible gun. Probably one of the worst modern semi automatic handguns. I went to a 45, and then I started shooting competition. I believe I shot my first, when I got back into competition handgun shooting, a uh, USPSA, I believe it was. I started with a Glock 21. That was my duty gun at the time. 
and uh, quickly realized that I could shoot a lot more and practice a lot more with 9mm and be more accurate with 9mm. And I made the switch uh, to 9mm, like I said, way back when it was not the cool thing, back when everybody thought you had to at least have a 40 or a 45. You know, 45 is acceptable. You got more capacity with a 40. It was by far the most common law enforcement cartridge. Almost nobody was recommending that you carried 9mm. Back then, I was seen of like, why would you carry such an old antiquated round? And it's kind of funny that we've come full circle and it's the law enforcement round again. It's the FBI round again. And I think they made the right choice on that. Uh, for the reasons I stated before, you can practice a lot more and shoot a lot more um, and get a lot more hits on target quickly given the same skill level. I don't, I don't want to lie about numbers, but I remember doing this when I was evaluating and I don't remember if I did 9 versus 40 or 9 versus 45, but I had a, a competition size target at a certain distance and I don't remember the numbers, but I remember the draw and how many rounds I could get off in a certain amount of seconds. And I remember it being not even close. I could get far more, far more rounds on target in the same amount of time with 9 millimeter. And I thought to myself when I made the switch, not just for competition, but carrying on duty that there was no way that the 40 was ballistically or the 45 was ballistically so much better that it was an advantage over being able to get that many more rounds on target quickly with the nine millimeter. So I made the switch and I've carried it a long time. Uh, it's been my go-to round since I switched. And that was probably circa 2008, nine when I switch from 45 to 9 millimeter, and I still carry a 45 from time to time, but my, my primary gun for concealed carry and for duty carry is and has been since then 9 millimeter. This won't be a better Noah cartridge in the classic sense that we talk a lot about history, but the 9 millimeter came around in the turn of the century. I believe adopted or has a lineage to the 30 Luger, which even predates the turning of the last century. But the early 1900s, the single digits... And forgive me, I don't remember if it was like 1902 or 1904, 1908. I'm um, speaking off the cuff here, shooting from the hip, as they say, since this is gunfighter life. As I watch my dog destroy a box that's in the middle of the house, if you can hear that. And it was adopted for the Luger, which is a fantastic handgun. I have shot uh, an old school Luger, and I was getting headshots with it, and it was working reliably even though it was probably close to 100 years old, at 25 yards, I was hitting a little tiny head plate with it consistently. It was, a, it was a fantastic handgun. Probably why one of the reasons why it caught on and is so predominant today. It's been with us that whole time. Uh, the Browning High Power got chambered in it, which is a fantastic handgun, probably far ahead of its time. And countless number of handguns have been chambered in it. Countless number of iconic handguns have been chambered in it. You know the original Glock. The Glock 17 was chambered in it originally. It's a fantastic gun. It served. I couldn't even begin to list the amount of militaries and law enforcement around the world that use a nine millimeter or nine by nineteen or nine parabellum, which is just a cool name in itself. If you've ever studied Latin, which I have, just a cool cool name for the cartridge, and just a. I think it just strikes a really good balance of the. I'd say it's probably more efficient than the other predominant cartridges. And it's more shootable and it still maintains a good amount of lethality for a handgun cartridge. Understanding that most handgun cartridges aren't lethal. I, last time I checked stats or heard stats and, and I don't know these to be, I don't know that you could ever have exact numbers on this. So don't take this as gospel. But about 80% of handgun wounds are not fatal, whatever caliber it's in. But that being said, as far as effectiveness of handgun goes, it's pretty effective. And it's very shootable. And economy of scale, it's cost effective to shoot. For all those reasons, it's it's a fantastic cartridge. I often will go against the trend and buck the trend and kind of do my own thing just because that's, I guess, the way that I am, the way that God made me. But I don't do that when it doesn't make sense. 9mm is the most prolific handgun defensive cartridge I think for very good reason so 
now that with all that being said, a little bit of the history, a little bit of why it's so prolific today, let me talk about some of my favorite nine millimeter loads. Now, I'll start off not at the beginning, but I'll start off with recent, fairly recent history. There was a big mass shooting in the metropolitan area where I was recruited. I was, like I said, a private contractor for a three-letter government agency. Uh, by God's grace, I was recruited in that metropolitan area after a big active shooter incident to form a SRT team, a special response team. A group of very well-trained, professional, highly effective tactical unit to stop active shooters. And I was very blessed to be the commander of that and to form that team. And uh, when it came to the handgun cartridge, I had I had no question it was going to be the 9mm. Now, I'm also not a dictator. I let my guys, I let my men pick other things if they wanted to carry a 45 or if they wanted to carry other calibers. I, I let them do that. But I encouraged the 9mm saying that I would supply the 9mm, the com- not I, the, the company would supply the 9mm ammo, but if they wanted to carry something else, they had to supply that themselves. And even I myself sometimes would carry a 45, just for mission specific reasons. But I also came down to me picking the load. And there are a lot of good 9mm loads out there. Um, the one I'm going to recommend is the one that I settled on, so obviously that's probably the one I'm going to recommend to you. And that is the Spear. The Spear Gold Dot 147. I like heavy for caliber 9mm loads because I personally like the recoil impulse better. When it comes to the heavy for caliber bullets in the 9mm, to me they tend to have more of a slow rolling recoil impulse versus a snappy quick impulse and you know this is not black and white some people like a snappy recoil that returns quickly some people like the slow roll of the i guess less choppiness of the heavier for caliber nine millimeter loads i like them for that reason and i also like them for ballistic performance when a bullet when a bullet strikes something, it immediately starts well, as soon as it leaves the barrel pretty much, it immediately starts losing velocity. And as soon as it hits something, it starts losing velocity. But it will hold on to that mass. I like the heavier mass bullets. I think they do well ballistically. I think they no matter how good modern technology is, bullets don't always expand. And I like the bullet profile of the heavier bullets. They tend to have a flat nose. And a more flat nose conical shape harkening back to the old semi wad cutters, more so than the lighter for caliber round bullets. And if they don't expand, those bullet shapes tend to do a little bit better. And they also tend to do a little bit better through barriers. In general, I know there are exceptions. For those reasons, I settled on the Spear 147 Gold Dot for, and with the big caveat of the next reason I'm going to give, because Spear wisely makes a matching in their gold dot line practice round. They make the Spear Lawman 147, which they design to match the same bullet diameter, the same, well, obviously bullet diameter, but the same bullet geometry, the same velocity. So, you can practice with ammo that's affordable. You're not paying a dollar, fifty-two dollars a round to practice with. And if it feeds that spear lawman, there's no reason why it shouldn't feed the spear gold dots. You know, don't be the guy that you know goes and shoots Winchester white box 115 grain and then loads up your you know 124 grain plus peas and don't practice with them because there's no guarantee. Even if it's a really good gun and really good ammo, that that gun is going to work with that ammo. I've had that happen before with Glocks, you know, that are supposed to eat everything, but they just didn't like a particular load. Don't trust your life to something that's unproven. And I like the Spear 147 Gold Dots and the Spear 147 Lawmans for that reason. Now, that being said, if you tend to prefer the lighter for caliber, I would recommend, you know, like the Spear... 
the Spear uh, 124 grain Gold Lodge or the Spear 124 grain Lawmans. And they even do the same thing with 115 grain. But my primary load that I'm going to recommend is the Spear Gold Dot 147s and the Spear Lawman 147s. Uh, that would be my go-to, and it was when I had to pick. My second go-to that I would pick personally for me, not if I was arming a large group of people, but I like, because I generally tend to prefer guns with longer barrels, I generally, a lot of the, let me back up. I let my guys carry whatever they wanted, provided they shot it well and they could qual with it, and our qual was very demanding. But some guys would want to carry a smaller gun, a Glock 19, or sometimes we did covert stuff and they chose the Glock 19. And those Spear 147s tend to do well out of a multitude of barrel lengths. If it was for me personally, for a full-size duty gun, which I almost always carried on duty, would be the Winchester Ranger T. That is their like new predominant, preeminent line, Winchester's you know lineage from the old Black Talon days. The Winchester Ranger T M147. And you can also get Winchester 147 grain ammo that has a similar bullet profile. So you can do the same thing I just talked about. And to me, that's most important. The most important aspect when choosing a defensive load in anything, but also applies to 9mm, is getting around that shoots the same point of aim, point of impact, and getting ammo that you can practice with that works the same as your, your let's say, defensive ammo. Because then what good does it do you to practice all the time, like I said, with your Winchester white box 115 grain, which I'm not knocking that ammo, but if you're doing that and you're carrying, you know, Winchester 127 grain plus P plus Ranger T's, unless there's some freak coincidence, they're probably not going to shoot in the same place. And a lot of times they can shoot drastically in a different place. So I'd rather have a round that was less ballistically effective that I hit exactly where I was aiming because to me shot placement is far more important. You know, if you can afford to do all your practicing with their Winchester 127 plus P plus, it's a great round ballistically, but I do generally don't like to practice with $2 a round ammo. But if you can, hats off to you. But I like to practice with, you know, the guns that I trust my life to and count on saving other people's lives with and i want to be able to hit where i'm aiming to me that's number one important and those loads let me do that if you go to something different my my third before i go to the other something different my third option which i really really like which i haven't been able to find for a while which is why it's my third option i'm not sure if they still make it but it was a wise choice for winchester they made the Winchester train and defend. The train was the practice ammo and the defend was the defensive ammo. And it was designed on the same premise as the Spear Lawman and the Spear Gold Dot. It was designed to match your practice ammo with your, your shooting defensive ammo. Anyway, my dog is, uh, my, my puppy Rhodesian Ridgeback is being a little obnoxious right now, which is kind of great and adorable. But where was I? That Winchester Train and Defend, which also came in the 147s, I really, really like that. It also came in other calibers, if you're looking at that. Like I said, I haven't seen it in a long time since pre-pandemic days. And I know a lot of ammo has been hard to find, but that's one reason I would recommend that third. You'll notice my none of my top choices were plus P rounds. I don't generally like plus P rounds for the fact that, like I said, I like to practice. And I don't generally practice with plus P rounds. I think they're hard on a gun, and I think if you do like a circle test, putting whatever you consider to be your kill zone on a target at, let's say, you know, three, five, seven yards and do drills with that, I think you'll get more rounds on target quickly, more consistently with not plus P ammo. Uh, And for me, I think most shooters shoot it better. And to me, shot placement is more important than plus P ammo. That being said, I have a couple recommendations if you just want the plus P ammo. My number one is an old school round, but it was my first, you know, either my first or my second 9mm round that I carried. And it's the Winchester 9BPLE. Not a super, I guess, great marketing name, but you can look it up. It's the Federal 9BPLE. It is 9mm plus P+. 
I ran that. My first, I believe, duty 9mm gun was a Smith & Wesson M&P Pro. Uh, great gun. I ran, that's what I went and did my FBI firearms instructor class with. That ammo is great. It has a gr very good proven track record, the Federal 9 BPLE, and it is 9mm plus P plus. Make sure your gun can handle it. Not all guns can. It is plus P plus. The other one I will give you is also plus P plus. If you're going to go hot, you might as well go hot. And it is the Winchester 127. I believe it's a also, it's either just a regular Ranger or a Ranger T 127 plus P plus. Also has a good track record, so I'd recommend those. What I would recommend for a new shooter, because a lot of times new shooters will go and just buy ammo at, used to be able to buy it at Walmart. I guess Walmart doesn't sell handgun ammo anymore, which is a sad time in America, I guess. But anyway, there used to be a time you could just go to Walmart, but I guess most big box stores, wherever you are, you're probably going to go in and find Remington or Winchester or Federal 115 grain. It's the most common 9mm load. And if that's how you're going to buy your practice ammo, I would recommend buying a defensive load that matches that. And you have to test this in your gun. If it's not specifically designed to match, you got to test it out. So find a defensive load in 115 grain with similar bullet profile, similar advertised velocity. And just because it advertises the same velocity does not mean it'll be the same out of your gun. So you go, like I said, you got to buy a box or two and test it. But if you're going to shoot the 115 grains, I would recommend the 115 grain spear gold dots. If you don't want to, the load that I mentioned before has a not plus P counterpart, which is just a federal 9BP. Federal 9BP. And it's usually pretty affordable and you usually get it in a 50 round box instead of a 20 round box. Probably not something you're going to find at a big box store, but if you're a defensive load, order a couple boxes online and you should, that should last you quite a while. And if you shoot your federal 115 grain, which is a, is a good load, then you might try practicing and carrying that, making sure it works in your gun and it, it, uh, shoots in the same point of aim, point of impact. To me, again, that's the most important. So for the 115 grains, I would recommend the nine, Federal 9BP or the Spear Gold Dot 115 grains. There's a load that is really good that I didn't mention because it doesn't meet the criteria that I laid out as being most important. And that is the Hornady Critical Duty 135 grain. I believe that's one of, if not the new FBI load. And I have used it. And it is a good load, the 135 grain. I think it's plus P, Hornady Critical Duty. And I like Hornady. They make great ammo. I like, that's probably a great load ballistically. It's designed to have specific attributes for barrier penetration and things like that. And it's probably certainly a good load. That load, however good it might be ballistically, does... If anybody makes 135 grain plus P practice load, I'm not aware of it. And it's certainly not common. So for that reason, that load's probably a good load. But a lot of the guys on the team, I don't know if a lot, but it was suggested that we use that load for the SRT team, special response team. And I, I didn't go with it for that reason because I'm not going to spend that much on I'd rather my guys be able to practice more. And there's just, I don't know of any good affordable option in 135 grain 9 millimeter load with that similar bullet geometry to practice with myself and anybody that I'm teaching or training or in charge of that's defending their life and other people's lives to hit where they're aiming like I said that's the number one criteria if I didn't mention your load or something like that by all means leave a comment in the review leave a review and leave a comment that's a good way to get a scene or you know, you can always message me. Go to goodshepherdtraining.com. Goodshepherdtraining.com is the umbrella that houses this podcast, also the Alpha Male podcast. And if you care about the important stuff, Simple Man Sermons, the preachings of a simple man called by God to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Anyway, go to goodshepherdtraining.com. You can contact me on there. 
If you want to contribute to the podcast, if you think this content was worth a fraction of the cost of a box of ammo, consider going there and being a patron. To all the patrons that I have, thank you so much. Um, I am truly humbled that anybody listens to this, that God chooses to use me at all. I am humbled, and I am very humbled that you guys choose to support and be part of this tribe. And I'm very blessed by that, and I don't take that for granted, hopefully. And I just wanted to say thank you. And if you do want to become a part of the tribe like that and support for as little as a dollar a month, you can go to Patreon. Uh, again, go to GoodShepherdTraining.com. Scroll down. There's a Patreon link on there. You can click on that and give whatever you want. And if you don't want to, don't don't feel guilty about it. If you want to support in other ways, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and leave a review of the podcast. Leave a comment, leave some stars, whatever platform. I assume a lot of people listen to this on on iTunes. You can scroll down, hit a bunch of stars, and leave a review, write a review, even if it's super simple. You know, hey, great podcast, or hey, your audio quality could use some work, but good content. Whatever you want to write. I'm not telling you what to write. You write what you think is, is justified. Anyway, with that, as a thank you for listening to the end of the episode, a tactical tip. This one applies to handguns. You don't, however, find this in the gun cleaning section or generally I've never seen it in any gun stores. You find it in the automotive section like at uh, one of the big automotive stores. And it's called Hyperlube. It's an engine oil additive. It's very thick. It's very viscous. And I love using this on handguns. Not, caveat, not on the fine moving parts, not on the firing mechanism, the trigger mechanism, the sear, things like that. This Hyperlube is super thick, super viscous, and I like to use it on the slide-to-frame fit, and I like to use it on the barrel hood and the barrel lockup. It's super thick, it's super viscous. If you shoot your guns a lot, like I like to do, it really helps with the wear and tear on the gun. It makes the gun super slick. It's super thick, it's super viscous, and it comes, I think, in a one quart or one and a half quarts for whatever it costs. It's not cheap, but if you compare that to what you get in little tiny bottles of gun grease or slide glide, which is also a good product, but if you, if you count the amount that you get for the price, cause you're, it's meant to be added into engines to boost performance, then it, it lasts a long time. So Hyperlube, check it out. You just put some in your fingers and play with it and you'll see why I recommend it, especially for slide to frame fit, especially for hood lockup. Again, that area where your hood locks into the slide or where your slide to frame fits together, try and keep, it won't really hurt if you get it in there, but I would try and keep it out of like your firing pin channel and your, like your small moving parts, you know, where your sear and your trigger bar or whatever kind of handgun you have, those kind of small parts. I'd still stick with something like, the old trusted REM oil or something thinner for that. But that Hyperlube is pretty awesome. And it's not, like I said, not cheap, but for the amount you get as far exceeds what you normally get for like firearms lubrication. So if you do it, you know, per ounce, it's probably a lot cheaper. Anyway, it's a great product. Check it out. You know, I don't get any corporate sponsors. I take no bribes, no, I don't get any money or any kickback from that. It's just a good product and I use it. And I thought I'd give it to you as a tactical tip. And I'm going to give you another one. Since uh, I was thinking about it today, I was doing some drills uh, on iron sights and red dots. And as you heard in the bio, I was LAPD. I don't think that LAPD's qual is the best qual out there by far. But I think it is good in terms of most law enforcement quals. And I think that one of the stages they have is fantastic for the concealed carrier self-defense person, which I assume a lot of you guys listening to this are. I assume there are some professional gunfighters listening to this, but I assume a lot of people are just concealed carriers. And I think this stage of the qual, and this is the qual back when I, when I was part of it, I don't, they may have changed it now. I'm not even sure, but I call it the LAPD failure drill. It's just a stage of the qual. I don't know that it even has a name, but if you're familiar with the El Presidente, it's kind of similar to that, but less rounds, which who doesn't appreciate that nowadays, but you have two targets with a defined chest area and a defined head area. You can look up the LAPD pistol qualification target, unless they've changed it, it's a really good target. 
I think it's more, one of the better, more realistic targets. And I'm not just saying that. Like, I'm an FBI certified firearms instructor as well, and I think the FBI uh, target is kind of sucks. But the LAPD one's not bad. It has a very good, well-defined head box, and it has a very good, well-defined torso sections. Anyway, without too much of an aside, the drill is you draw, you shoot two rounds to one target to the body, two rounds to the other body, one to the head, and one to the head. If you're a right-handed shooter, most right-handed shooters, in my experience, shoot faster left to right. So if they're the same amount of threat level, you shoot it from left to right. So two to the body, two to the body, one to the head, one to the head. I'm not going to set your standard for you. You do that in the amount of time that you can do it in and try to improve as a gunfighter, as an alpha male. You know, So the, dr- the uh, drill is draw, and then two to the body, two to the body, one to the head, one to the head. It's a good drill. Two to the body, two to the body, one to the head, one to the head. It's kind of a Mozambique drill times two. And I think it's a good practical drill for self-defense, for concealed carry. It's not a lot of rounds. You know, if you can do different variations of it, you can shoot the first target and then do a reload and finish up on the second target and then your headshots. Or you could do both bodies and then reload and then headshots. You You can do all kinds of manner of things, but I think just the basic one is a good concealed carry defensive drill i would recommend doing it at seven yards but you can do it closer or further away like i said variations are good with that guys i hope you like today's podcast if you like this podcast you think it's worth supporting it's worth your time and my time please consider going to goodshepherdtraining.com and clicking on the patreon link if you don't want to do that at least uh Make sure you're subscribed and please leave a review of the podcast if the app you're listening to it on lets you leave reviews or click some stars or whatever that is. With that, gunfighters, have a blessed day.